You know, I got to be dead honest with you. I used to be a big fan of Joe Rogan. I used to listen to him quite a bit. I didn't listen to every single episode, but if he had someone on there who I was a big fan of or interested in their work, I would uh, tune in and listen. And I loved it because you could listen to him talk for three hours. One of my favorite episodes was when he had Dan Aykroyd on. And they talked about all the movies Dan Aykroyd made. They talked about Dan Aykroyd's fascination with aliens, and I loved it. Uh, I always loved the episodes he had with Dennis McKenna because I'm big into psychedelics, and I love those episodes. I loved when he talked with Sturgill Simpson, who's one of my favorite country singers. Um, and I loved when he talked to people like Bernie Sanders and Andrew Yang, and I would make this argument, hey, go check these out because now you can hear this person talk for three hours, and you can hear them actually talk about their ideas. You can get to know them more as a person. Because if you watch them in a debate, you're just going to hear them talk for like two minutes, and then they've got like a 30-second rebuttal, and nothing ever really gets said. Everybody just sits and screams at each other. So this is really cool. Go check this out. And I liked it for a long time, and there was times that I defended Joe Rogan when I felt like the mainstream media got things wrong about him. There was times I would chime in to say, wait a minute, you know, he didn't say that, or wait a minute, hold on, I'm going to take up for him in this scenario. But then there come a point where I could no longer defend it. There came a point where I could no longer take up for it. And that's when he started turning over his platform to all these far-right crackpot conspiracy theorists. He's got one of the largest platforms in the world. And those are the people that he let sit there. And when he let those people sit there, there was a lot of people out there hanging on every word. Because, let's be honest for a minute, we all, left or right, we all have a distrust of the mainstream media. And we're all trying to seek the truth. And we're all going out there and searching for things. And yeah, Joe Rogan's like your buddy who had the, the cool brother in the basement with the lava lamps in the pot. And he's sitting there and he's, he's cool. And you go over and talk about records and shit with him. That's what it always reminded me of. Um, he reminded me of a cousin I had who I used to go over to his house and he always had the good weed and he always had the good records and he always had the good movies and he always had the most interesting stories. That's what it reminded me of at first. But then suddenly... It just became like, okay, I'm going to tap into this audience and I'm going to give this audience a voice. And then what was the real deal breaker and what soured me on it the most was when I buried two family members who passed away from COVID both within like three weeks of each other. My aunt, my cousin, and their and the stepdad, all three passed away in like a month's time. A, ho a whole household wiped out. And one of the last conversations I carried on with them, they was talking about how they didn't need the vaccine because they listened to Joe Rogan. And I remember saying, yeah, but now Joe did say that if you're obese or if you're in bad health, you, you, you probably should go ahead and get it. But they would not hear me because, nope, that guy on Joe Rogan said this. We, we believe him. And I had to take their ashes out and bury them literally. So it's very hard for me now. I, I, I mean, Rick Flyer was on Joe Rogan not too long ago, and I'm a huge wrestling fan. I love Rick Flyer. He's one of my all-time favorites. I really couldn't sit through it. I, I, I really couldn't sit there and entertain it. Because it's one thing if you're sitting there talking aliens with Dan Aykroyd. You know, if you're, if you're talking aliens with Dan Aykroyd, ain't nobody dying. If you're talking, you know, JFK conspiracies and you're wondering who was on the grassy knoll, okay, fine, ain't nobody dying. But when you start talking about medicine and you start talking about global pandemics and you turn the platform over to people who have been barred and, and fired for spreading misinformation and you give them a platform to share their stories, it gets in people's head and they believe it. And I know two that went to their grave because of it. So I got to be dead honest with you. I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't listen anymore. And when I make this video and post it, I won't dive into the comment section and read it either. Because it's still something that I'm, I'm, I'm having to get over and, and live with. I'm all for people having long-winded discussions. I'm all for people looking for the truth and seeking the truth. But when you start turning your platform over to grifters and you start turning your platform over to people who, who, have, who have been proven to be liars and you start giving them this platform and going, well, wait a minute, wow, what, Jamie, pull that up. You know, they'll sit and they'll spread these stories like the, the litter box in the high school. So come, some kid identifies a cat. They'll sit and spread that shit. There ain't a word of truth to it. And they'll keep spreading it. And the hatred and the lies will just keep on spreading and at the end of the day, if they're trying to combat the mainstream media, they're doing a miserable job of it. And again, I would argue that he is the mainstream media now because more people listen to him than they do the mainstream. And more people hangs on every word. So, yeah, I'll be dead honest with you. It's, it's, a, it's a hard thing for me to talk about. I've been wanting to talk about this for a long time. Um, but I've sort of put it off and put it off and put it off because it it sucks I had a cousin who was like a little brother to me could make me laugh quicker than anybody 
and had the most contagious laugh ever. If he laughed, you laughed. It didn't matter if it was funny. It didn't matter what he laughed at. And um, that got stolen from me because his parents bought into a bunch of bullshit that Joe Rogan allowed to be voiced on his platform. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tuned out and I won't be reading the comments, so y'all have fun with it.